when we start looking at these problems with gases, one of the trickier things is to figure out which equation to use. So let's just look at each one and how it works, and then we'll show you how you can uh, know which to use. We're going to start with Pivnert, the ideal gas law. P is pressure, and it needs to be in atmospheres. So be sure you know the correct units for everything. Volume has to be in liters. N is just moles, number of moles. R is the ideal gas constant. It has a lot of units associated with it. And then temperature has to be in Kelvin. Now, in all of the gas laws, temperature has to be in Kelvin because Kelvin temperature is pro directly proportional to kinetic energy. If you double a Kelvin temperature, the kinetic energy has doubled. And so mathematically, it works out better. If you double a Celsius temperature, the kinetic energy has not doubled. And so anyway, it would make our, comp our equations a lot more complicated if we didn't use Kelvin. So in all gas laws, use Kelvin for temperature. Pressure and volume kind of depend on the problem that you're doing. Because Pivnert has that R in it, and R has um, these units associated with it, you need to match to those. In other words, in, when you do the math, we need those units to cancel, and that is why our pressure has to be in atmospheres and our volume has to be in liters. So sometimes you're going to have to convert before you can plug into this. Um, for example, if you are given a pressure in millimeters of mercury, you will divide by 760 to get your pressure into atmospheres to use in this equation. If your temperature is given to you in Celsius, you're going to add 273 0.15, a lot of times the 0.15 gets rounded off um, to get to Kelvin. And then liters, if you're given milliliters, um, you can convert um, that as well. So for this equation, um, PV equals NRT, you only have one pressure, one volume, one temperature. You're not doing anything to the gas. You're not heating it or cooling it or compressing it or anything. It's just one set situation. Okay, let's look at this other um, equation. And this one has the ones and the twos. And the ones are for like before you do something to the gas and the twos are for after you do it. In other words, before you heat the gas and after you heat it, before you compress the gas and after you um, compress the gas and so on. And you'll be able to spot that in the problems because you'll have something happening to the gas or simply that you see more than one pressure or you see more than one volume given or more than one temperature given. That's your big clue that you're going to use um, this equation the combined gas law. On it, um, the pressure needs to be in the same units for the ones and the twos. And the same thing with the volumes. They have to match. It doesn't have to match R though. So we don't have to have liters and atmospheres necessarily because there's no R that we're matching to. Remember we did that because, we did that up here because of um, the units in R. Temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay, so these two equations are very different. One is for a set situation PV equals NRT, and then this combined gas law is for if you're doing something to the gas.
Another thing that comes in handy is um, STP. So STP is standard temperature and pressure. And it's kind of like um, a normal values that we would use. Anyway, you need to know z um, standard temperature is zero degrees C and standard pressure is one atmosphere. And these are defined, those are exact numbers. Um, the convenient thing about STP is that uh, when you're comparing amounts of gas, you can just say at STP and then compare their volumes or whatever. Well, something that's useful is to know that there are 22.4 liters of a gas per one mole at STP. And that's a good thing to have memorized because there will be problems where um, you can't, you would have to plug these in and do the math and you can um, just do a little faster by knowing that conversion factor for sure. Okay, let's look at some problems and how you analyze them and see uh, what to do, decide what to do. Okay, so when you look at a problem, what you do is you go through and you look at the, the numbers and their units and you label um, what they are. So how many liters does, and then I have a number and it says mole. So I should keep in mind mole means, um, or N means moles in these problems. And then I have a substance, which means something to just keep in mind. I can use the molar mass to get, go between grams and moles. Not saying I need to, but we'll see. Uh, keep going. I have a uh, temperature and I have a pressure. Okay, so which equation will we use? Well, what I notice is that this is a set situation. Nothing is happening to this gas. Um, I'm not cooling it or heating it. I don't have anything repeated either. There's only one temperature, one pressure and it looks like I'm looking for volume. Okay, so nothing's repeated, one set situation. I'm going to use this equation. Okay, and then before I plug it in, I want to make sure that I have everything in the right units. And let's just kind of check and make sure. So we're looking for volume. Uh, we have moles. We have R, R is that constant. We can get temperature and we can get pressure. So yes, we have everything we need to solve for our volume. We just need to make sure everything is in the correct units. So let's just start by looking at our pressure. And to get it to atmospheres as we need it to atmospheres because of R, we're going to divide by 760. And so there's our um, pressure. And then we need to look at our temperature. And add 273. Let's consider sig figs when we do this temperature. It's an um, we're adding, so we'll use the add rule. And remember for that, we're kind of just cutting it off like this. So my answer is actually 304 Kelvin. These extra digits out here, um, from these right here, a lot of times those aren't going to end up mattering. They kind of get rounded off. Um, but I want you to notice something, and that is that we started right here with two sig figs for our temperature. But as soon as we add that 273, now we have three sig figs. We gained sig figs, and that happens when you add sometimes. Um, so be sure that when you get to the end of these problems, you take that into account, that your temperatures often will go from two sig figs to three sig figs in that step. Okay, we're ready to plug in. So I'm plugging into this.
okay, and then algebraically what I need to do to get the V by itself is I need to divide both sides um, by this part, this part. And I'm going to rewrite just so that in your notes um, you'll be able to see what I did and just in case um, the algebra gets you. So I'll pause the video though. Thing by that 0.989 atmospheres. Over here the numbers cancel but so do the units. Over here this atmosphere cancels with that one. This K cancels with that one. This mole cancels with that one, and so the only units that are left are liters, which means that our volume will come out in liters. If you check all of your units before you put them in, like make sure you have atmospheres, liters, K, um, then you can know that they all are going to cancel, and you'll also know what your answers will come out in. In other words, I would know this one would come out in volume or in liters for my volume. Okay, so I get 0 0.303 liters. And let's look at sig figs. Well, if I look at this part right here, everything has three sig figs, so that's how I got three. If I had gone back to my problem statement, this temperature 31 is in um, Celsius, but it only has two sig figs. But remember, when I added the 273 here, um, I gained a sig fig, so I ended up needing to have three for that. Let's look at another problem. Let's start by going through and labeling our numbers. This is gallons, so that's a volume. Temperature, millimeters of mercury, that's a pressure. I have another temperature, I have another volume, and I'm asking for a new pressure, that's what I'm looking for. So I notice there's a lot of repeating here. I have two different temperatures and two different volumes, and it's implied that I have an initial pressure and I'm looking for a new one. So that means I need all the ones and twos, and I just need to read it and make sure I number these correctly. Okay, so I, this is a situation where we have like a before and after. And the equation to use in that case is this one with the ones and twos. Okay, and then as far as units go, remember we don't have to match to R. Because R is not in that equation, we can use whatever units of volume that we want, say, as long as it's the same before and after. So, like, these are both in gallons, so that's good. I don't have to worry about that. The um, temperature, I'm going to have, temperature always has to be in Kelvin. The P1 is in millimeters of mercury, and that means that my P2 will come out in millimeters of mercury. They match. So let's start by figuring out our temperatures in Kelvin. Kind of subtracting upside down here. Okay, so I'm ready to plug in. So plugging into this.
okay. And then I can see that um, my units are going to cancel. And really what I'm doing is I'm dividing both sides by gallons, so those cancel. If I multiply both sides by K, that cancels. And that makes it a little bit easier um, to look at the algebra. Let me just rewrite, pause and rewrite. Now make sure if you start off like this, not putting in those units, make sure that you're putting everything in the right position, but also make sure that you've put it in the correct units before you do that. Now algebraically, um, there are any way you want to get to P2 is fine, um, but I'll show you a way that some students um, like to do that, and that is by cross multiplying, which basically just means the top of this one times the bottom of this one is equal to the top of this one times the bottom of that one. So I'm just going to rewrite it like that. And then from there, um, algebraically, what I'm going to do to get P2 by itself is I'm going to divide both sides by all of this. Of course, on this side it cancels, and I will be able to solve for my P2. And because I checked my units before I put them in and everything matched, I noticed that my millimeters of mercury were the only units that didn't uh, cancel. I see I didn't write them as I came down, but that means my P2 will come out in millimeters of mercury. Again, everything here has three sig figs, so three sig figs. Okay, well let's do one more um, that involves, well we'll see what equation it involves. Let's look. Again, let's read through and label everything. So liters is a volume, atmospheres is a pressure. Keep reading. Ah, I have another liter, so I have another volume. And right there I know which equation I'm going to use. Because I see a repeat, I see there are two volumes. The only equation I know with two volumes is this one. Okay, let's finish looking at what we got. So we need to label these. This is a one and a one. Make sure they match up right. This is a two and I'm looking for a new pressure. So I'm looking for P2. Okay, notice that nothing was said about the temperature. And so I need to make an assumption. I need to assume temperature is constant. In other words, T1 equals T2, they are the same number. And it doesn't matter which number they are, um, I could just pretend like they're both 55 or something. 55 is Kelvin. And then I could take this equation and multiply both sides by that number and the T would just cancel out. So um, really, since T1 and T2 are the same number, the temperature just cancels out and I'm left with this equation, which happens to be Boyle's Law. Okay, so that's what I like about um, using this equation, is that you can simplify it for your um, particular situation. Anytime you have a gas going through a change and one of them is not mentioned, if there's no pressure given or temperature or volume, whichever one is missing, you just assume it's constant and it drops out of the equation. So now we're ready to plug in. And again, I don't have to worry about um, matching to R, although these would be okay. Um, as long as my ones and twos match each other, Again, I'm going to divide both sides by this to get P2 by itself. 
and of course it cancels on this side. Notice my liters cancel. So the only unit that's left is atmospheres for my P2. And so that comes out in atmospheres. Very good. Now you're ready to try the exercise.